just want to show you one more example of an alternating series and the analysis you would do on it. Um, so let's say we wanted to analyze whether this converges absolutely, conditionally, or if it diverges. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check for absolute convergence, because if that happens, we don't need to check for, condition, uh, for conditional. So we'll take the absolute value. And that ends up just giving me this series. Um, okay, so let's analyze this. But this series, this behaves, this is going to behave like this series. Right? And that's because. Um, well, that 9 isn't that important in the long run. And, uh... So if we analyze this, um... This series on the right, let's see, what do we know about this? Well, it's, it's gonna... This diverges, right? It's a P series where your P is uh, is less than one, so that's going to diverge. So that means that the behavior of that is exactly the same as the behavior of our series that we're analyzing here. So just to show that they behave the same way, we're going to have to take the limit of the of the uh, of the terms. I'm going to use uh, I'm going to write this as one over five n to the one half plus nine divided by 1, divided by 5, and the 1 half, but that equals 5n to the 1 half divided by 5n to the 1 half plus 9, but this limit equals 1. And that means that this series here diverges too. Okay, so it diverged, but that just means, if you look back, that just means that our alternating series does not converge absolutely. So we check, the con check to see if it converges conditionally. So what do we need? Well, we need all the terms to be positive, and it's true that Those are positive for all n bigger than a, bigger than or, bigger than or equal to one, which is what where n starts. And we need uh, the terms to be decreasing. So is it true that the nth term is less than the n plus first term? Well. We made the denominator just slightly bigger by putting in, taking the square root of n plus 1 instead of the square root of n. So if the denominator is slightly bigger, then the whole expression is slightly smaller. So that's true as well. And then we need the limit as n goes to infinity. to be zero. So let's see, as n goes to infinity, that clearly goes to zero. So it passed the alternating series test, which means it converges conditionally. The alternating series test also allows us to analyze the endpoints of an interval of convergence when we're analyzing a power series. So for example, let's look at this power series. This is an alternating power series. And so what we'll do is we're going to use the ratio test as usual. But when we get to the endpoints, you'll see that those are going to result in alternating series that we'll need to analyze using the tests that we have. So 
Um, the first thing we do is use the ratio test. So I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the n plus first term divided by the nth term. And you know what? Since I've done this enough in previous videos, what I'll do is I'll spare the, to spare the writing. Let's just note that the absolute value of the n plus first term is going to result in this. Right, after putting absolute values around the entire expression, the negative 1 to the n is now just always positive, and then x plus 6 needs to be uh, <coughs> expressed in absolute values because we're not, we need to ensure that that's going to be positive. When you divide by the nth term, then you get this. Okay, and so we get a nice cancellation right away. That is now the absolute value of x plus 6. And so now I can take that out of the limit, and I've got the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1, but that equals 1. Okay, so the ratio test resulted in this. So, um, for, convert to, for it to converge, we need that to be less than 1, which implies that um, negative 1 is less than x plus 6, which is less than 1, which implies that if you minus 6 from both sides, uh, whoops, you get ne uh, this interval of convergence. So we, we would be done, except this, because if you remember that the ratio test doesn't tell us about what happens at, at uh, you know, when L is 1. That's why this is a less than, not a, not a less than or equal to up here. Um, we need to test the endpoints individually. So, so we'll test the endpoints, and then that's where you'll see that the, uh, the alternating series test helps us. So... We need to test the endpoint. So negative seven. Let's be very formal. So when x equals negative seven, let's plug that into the series. So you get negative one to the n, and negative seven my uh, plus six is negative one. So you get another negative one to the n divided by n. Now negative one to the n times negative one to the n. is equal to negative 1 times negative 1 to the n, which is 1 to the n, so this results in this. Now that diverges. And we don't need to check for conditional convergence because it's not an alternating series. So that diverges, which means we're not going to put a less than or equal to under the, less the, uh, the inequality symbol next to the negative 7. Um, but we have to check the other endpoint. So the other endpoint would be when x is negative 5, and when x is negative 5, my series becomes, so when you plug in negative 5, you get negative 1 to the n times negative 5 plus 6 to the n, which is negative 1 to the n times 1 to the n. So you get this. Now this is, we've, we've come across this already. This is a, an alternating series that does not converge absolutely, and you can almost do that mentally. Because if you take its absolute value, you just get the series above it, which is the, uh, the harmonic series, which con diverges. But it turns out that this one does converge uh, conditionally, because, just as a brief reminder, uh, the terms are all positive, the non-oscillating terms are all positive. The terms are getting smaller, and the limit as n goes to infinity sorry about that, the limit as n goes to infinity 
is zero. So this converges conditionally. So because it converges conditionally, what that means is that we need to put in a less than or equal to under the negative five. And now this is my interval of convergence. Now, if you just look at the question though, it didn't ask for the interval of convergence. It said for what values does that series converge absolutely? So, I mean, I, I, I wanted to show you that you need to test, test, test the endpoints and that we accept all types of convergence on the uh, interval of convergence. But to answer this question specifically, for what values does this series converge absolutely? Only when x is ne uh, less than negative 5 and bigger than negative 7. Okay. So for all x on that interval. All right. Let's finish this section with one more example of a power series because they're, I know they're hard for students. Um, so we need to analyze this for its interval of convergence, where it converges absolutely, and its radius of convergence. Although these are found like, you know, within seconds of each other, so it's, we just need to point them out. So, uh, as usual, we use the ratio test. So I take the limit as x goes to infinity of the n plus first term divided by the nth term. We see a cancellation right away. And so this becomes, that can come out of the limit. And I have 3n over 3n plus 3, which goes to 1. So this goes to absolute value of x minus 4 times 1, which is that. In order to converge, we need that to be less than 1. And there's my radius of convergence, right there. So we can answer c right away. The radius of convergence Right, it's just it's going to be this this here. Um, okay, now let's get the interval of convergence. So this implies that negative one is less than x minus four, which is less than one, which implies that three is less than x, which is less than five. So we're, we're almost done with the interval of convergence, except we have to check the endpoints. So let's first check x equals 3. When you plug in x equals 3, you get 3 minus 4, which is negative 1 to the n, over 3n. And uh, this is, you can express this as, you can express this as 1 third as n goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Now this series here does not converge absolutely, but we've seen it before, it converges conditionally. Um, okay, so that will be included in the interval of convergence. When we plug in x equal to 5, we get 5 minus 4 is 1 over 3n, 1 to the n, and this is the same as a third. And there's our harmonic series again, which we know diverges. So there, there's our interval of convergence right here. But I'm going to include negative, I'm going to include 3. So that's the interval of convergence.
And then it says, where does the series converge absolutely? So I'm going to look, indicate that. This is uh, the answer to A. This is A. B we saw was uh, 1. Uh, sorry, C, the radius of convergence. And that's the answer to C. And the answer to B, B asks for where it converges absolutely. And it converges absolutely everywhere except for those endpoints. It, it converged conditionally at 3, but not absolutely. So that's where it converges uh, absolutely, just the entire interval excluding the 3, where it converged conditionally. All right, so there is, I would say, probably the hardest, these are the hardest types of things to handle, in my experience, in teaching AP Calc, BC Calc, um, this this section on series is just very loaded. You've probably noticed I have tons of videos on it. Um, but this wraps it up for the most part. And so um, hopefully, hopefully you're just getting a lot of practice in so you can get better at these type of things.